Nickel State University, 91.5 K in Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the fourth quarter of overtime. On 91.5 K in I'm Big Red. He is Mike Pichersey. Fourth quarter, dude, this hour is flying by. I'm having a blast, baby. It's, it's great to be back. Dude, I'll tell you. Before, before we went on break, after the uh, third quarter, Gerald made a reference. If you have not seen it, yes. bad... I want lip, cake now. Bad lip reading. But I want it now. NFL, it is the funniest video you could possibly ever imagine. Basically, someone had the genius idea of... Orange peanut? You got an orange peanut? For me? Wow. I respect you. Anyway. Pretty female cards. Dude, I could go all day, man. Uh, all right. Go. No, go, it, go. it is unbelievable. I'll, as you can tell, I probably watched it too much. Ah, you and me both. I saw you take three bites of your hot dog, knock and throw it away. I got 13 steaks over here. <laughs> Jason Garrett, man, that's my favorite one, man. Oh, man. Tom Brady. Hey. I'm white. I'm white. No, it, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Someone had the genius idea of just putting together sound bites of different NFL coaches, players, and things like that. But it great. matches up great. Yes. Like, like it's, it's, called, it's called bad lip reading. And if, type in bad lip reading NFL on YouTube. It'll come right up. I'm going to post it on the Facebook page. But, dude, it's hilarious. Check it out. And anyway, we can talk about it. Post it. Take a look at it. If you've got any comments, comment on it. Put it on our Facebook page, 91.5 Candy Shoe. Overtime. Overtime on 91.5 Candy Shoe. Sorry about that. And our Twitter handle. KNSU Overtime. So, you know, hit us up. we got plenty of stuff going on. And, uh, you know, social media. We were just talking about it. We're on it. We're, we're trying to become more and more relevant. Trying to get the fans more and more involved, and the more and more the season goes along, uh, Hornets, everything we're trying to get some people. And while we got it up, uh, Gerald's going to be on with me uh, four days a week now, Monday through be, Thursday, man. and Court Marshall will be on Court our Fridays. Will be on Fridays, and y'all have something special on Fridays. And right? we are moving our fan poll to Friday, fan right. poll Friday, so, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be it's going to be good. I'm excited for the semester with football being done. I finally have more time to do more stuff on the show. And, uh, I'm pumped. As you can tell, like I feel re-energized right now. Yeah, it's great. And uh, yeah. So anyway, boom. Let's talk about it. One thing I wanted to mention: Peyton Manning in this playoffs, the Denver Broncos. Everybody was kind of betting on Denver to win it all. Peyton Manning has had eight seasons where he's gone one and done. Eight, eight. Dude, that is a lot. And this is what has separated Tom Brady from Peyton Manning. I feel like over the course of their career. Um, you know, Peyton Manning, eh, I'm not putting it all on Peyton Manning, but there has been games in the playoffs where he has just underperformed, and this being one of them. You take away those two returns this year by Trenton Holiday, they're not even in that game with no, the Baltimore. No, not at all. And, I, and Tom Brady, I'm pretty sure. Tom Brady is one of those guys. And here's another thing that everybody keeps talking about. You look at three out of the four guys that were, three out of the four quarterbacks that were in the NFC and AFC championships, are all prototypical, stereotype, drop-back pocket passers. Well, the game of football is evolving into this option, wildcat, pistol, it'll be relevant now for so long. Three out of the four championship quarterbacks. Drop-back drop back passers. One is an athlete who doesn't depend on his feet all the time. And I think the game is evolving, and I think that you look at the NFL and where it's going, there are some things that are going to happen. Like, you know, Dilfer said it best on the, on the herd. He was talking about how the 49ers now, because Colin Kaepernick's running it so well, the pistol will become more of a more of a threat in the NFL. But eventually a defense coordinator will come along and stop it, and it'll be going. But, I mean, we're seeing an athletic, different type of quarterback in the Super Bowl this year. But you look at Tom Brady, you look at uh, – I don't think about it. You look at Peyton Manning. You look at some of these pop, you look at Joe Flacco. You're seeing guys that are a prototypical stereotype drop back passers, but they depend on their arm a lot. But the guys who get underestimated that nobody talks about are the guys that can make plays happen with their feet. Rogers. Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers for another Andrew one. Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck. Colin Kaepernick is another guy. You're seeing it. Where they're not stuck in the pocket. They don't depend on getting out of the pocket, but they can when they need to to make athletic plays. And I think that's the see, quarterbacks right. a lot of people are going to want exactly. going forward. Not now, so much scramblers. Not so much athletic, read option, the more, RG3s. More but, athletic instead of a three-step throw guy. And with the way the, the game is evolving itself, you have to be able to move as a quarterback. Exactly. Especially with the way defense is playing right now. Good yeah. God. It is unbelievable. Yes. 
Um, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I, I mean, definitely you, you have to be able to move as a quarterback. This is why people undoubtedly say Aaron Rodgers is the best. Not just can, not only because he can make plays from the pocket with his arm, and I must say he's got the most precise, and it, it's a freaking flamethrower of an arm. It's unbelievable the way the guy tosses the rock. Um, but he can make plays outside the pocket. Now, speaking of tossing the rock, Colin Kaepernick, you know, if you watch him throw balls across the middle, Dude, good lord. Laser. Dude. Laser. Dude, it's I, I would want to duck out of the laser. way from that pass. Ball me, Blazer. That's what I'm saying. He's a goon. Um, he can sling it, man. Hey. He's catching a lot of flack for all his tattoos that he got. Yeah, he I got to Nevada. That, I mean, dude, it's a big deal. Fans are saying, oh, a quarterback shouldn't be all inked up. But I think Michael Vick's got tats. I know this. And if he wasn't as black as he is, you could probably see him a lot better. But, you know, <laughs> Kaepernick is uh, a light-skinned, Light-skinned brother, who you know you can see his ink. And his, and he's got some nice tattoos, man. So I don't think he's hey, he caught some he's a slack. good dude. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. It's insane. Yeah. Hey, help me kill that old man. Help, help, <laughs> help me get that guy. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> All right. Bad lip reading is posted. I don't know. The post just might not post on the wall. I don't know what's happening. But I'm gonna have to have. Uh, anyway. So, Mike, tomorrow night. A lot going on right now uh, on the campus of Michigan State University. Our women's basketball team is playing really well. They have they caught a little funk. They haven't played well in the last couple of games. But, I mean, they're still up there. They're de- it's looking like they're definitely going to make the conference tournament. And it's looking like they're, they should make a run for a conference championship. In my eye, the men, once again, the younger team still playing well. We'll have more on men, Nichols men's and women's basketball. Kind of like a pregame sum up for the game tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is Stuff Stouffer. Become part of Nichols State history. Nichols is going to be taking on Texas A&M Corpus Christi Thursday, January 24th. Tailgating begins at 3, lasts till 5. The game is at 5.30 for the men's, I mean for the women's, 7.30 for the men's. Wear red, let's help, let's help stuff Stouffer and make it crowded, man. Let's have a good turnout for the women's and men's basketball team. Dude, it's already 12.58, man. It's time. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. I know. Overtime, it's not going into overtime today, man. It was a good fourth quarter, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, keep in mind. Stuff still for big things happening for uh, both men and women's basketball team. I've had the privilege of catching a few of the women's games. Uh, I haven't caught any men's yet, but um, they're trying to get healthy again. Right. And uh, yeah, you know. story of everybody's life, man. But they'll get it going. Oh, no absolutely, doubt. no doubt. He's Mike the Scherzi. I'm Big Red. Mike will be at the helm tomorrow, but I will be in here again. So we're gonna alternate, like you know, Mondays and Wednesdays. I'll be at the head. Tuesdays and Thursdays, and probably Fridays with you and Cortland. Mike will be the head of the show, so you know we're gonna we're gonna change some roles around a little bit in here. But as y'all know, this is my last semester on overtime, so Mike is about to get the keys to the caddy, baby. So we'll be back tomorrow, twelve to one, same time, same place, ninety-one point five KNSU. I found Fido, you guys.